Welcome everybody. Uh, quick reminder, if you don't want to be recorded, we are going to put this on YouTube so you can just mute your video. Um, and I'm just going to kick it off if I can figure out how to get to Mike. There he is. And here he is. Okay, Mike. Take right. it away. Well, once again, welcome everybody to our, uh, what is this, second Zoom competition, I think. Uh, we've had good a good attendance. Last time, I think we had 34, and uh, what are we up to? 32 now. And our online class that we took uh, a couple of weeks ago was, I think we had 24 watch it at that particular time. So it's really nice to see everybody participating. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but I've been trying to get out and walk every day and uh, take photographs along the way and post them on our local Petaluma page. Give me something to do and get some exercise. So I hope you're doing something that you enjoy and staying well. I have to thank Steve again for putting this all together and Bill for making sure we have a judge that is willing to do this tonight. So thank you guys. Uh, I also wanna uh, congratulate um, Terry up there for her best in show I saw on Photo Fanfare in Journalism. Congratulations, Terry. I don't know if you saw that. Well, you did. You got a best in show for journalism with a great tattoo photo. And uh, I'll hand it over to Tricia or somebody else uh, wants to talk about uh, field trips or Liz. Uh, anybody want to jump in here? Who, who wants next? I, let me unmute everyone and just speak when you're called on. Otherwise, be quiet. So just, <laughs> okay. Trish, are you there somewhere? I am. Um, we have another shelter in place field trip this weekend on Saturday. Um, it's going to be distortion. And so the idea is that you take photos. It can be um, in, it has to be in-camera distortion. So it can be using a prism, for example, uh, double exposures, intentional camera movement, anything that will distort the image, uh, mirrors, anything you can think of that, that will give you a distorted image. So that's the field trip for Saturday. And let me know if you can join us by sending me an email. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Okay, Bill, ready to one moment. You're on. So our judge tonight is Greg Edwards. I sent out an email about a month ago with a lot of information about Greg, bio, and philosophy. So I'll just keep it short at this point. He's a very experienced photographer, has his own uh, website, uh, newsletter, teaches. And we've been looking forward very much to uh, having him judge tonight. Greg. Thank you, Bill. Okay. You're on, Greg. Hello, folks. I'm actually very sorry to be doing this because I'd much prefer to be up seeing you face to face. But that's we what we too. are. We would too. I would like to have audience, not so much feedback as audience participation. I'll be asking questions from time to time and want to try to get discussion going on things that we'll be, we'll be seeing in some of the photos. Uh, there's a problem with that because we're not allowed to discuss the photos while they're being judged according to our club rules. Yeah. Except the judging has already occurred. No. So I wonder. Here's the point. Let's give it a try. I'm going to make it generic. Okay. Shall we begin? Right. Okay. I be have... better to do that at the end, though, as we normally do, rather than during the meeting. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear it. I'm have... suggesting that we do that at the end of the meeting, like we usually do, rather than during the meeting. It might lead to a too long of a meeting. Yeah, for the sake of time. Comment. 
I think I can make it run fast enough this way. I've done it many times this way. You should try it. I'd like to be respectful of our judge. Thank you. Sounds good. Let's see some great Let's photos. Let's Yay! Go. Hey. Let's give it a shot. Okay, how about um, Mike, keep an eye on time and we'll give it a try. And when we break in the middle, if it's taking too long, then we might have to cut it off. Okay. We'll give it a shot. Okay. okay. Sounds okay. good. How much time do you want per picture? A minute? 90 seconds? The meeting has started, but they yeah, have that's to about right. Okay. Now I have to play with the controls a sec here to get this going because let's see. Oh, wait. one moment. While we're waiting, those of you who are on uh, Zoom and haven't started using virtual backgrounds, they're a lot of fun. Yes. I have. I'll have to practice. <laughs> Set it up. The off problem line. is, you, ha you have to have a plain background in order for it to work, and <laughs> or it might it doesn't. Does I have mine up to hide the incredibly messy background I have. <laughs> yeah, you have a computer that supports that. Okay. My computer doesn't support that. Uh, okay. That, that day guy you have back there is awfully nice. Cheryl, Cheryl, put up a sheet behind you. I have a 2008 old laptop. That's all right. I, and, and, and then you train it what color it is by pushing this button. And it, yeah, I know. Okay. Oh. There we go. My Zoom screen is blocking. Okay. Does everyone see the journalism screen? Yes. 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 And let's see. Oh, journalism. You're up first, huh? Okay. Are we set to go? Yes. So, I think it was B, wrong section B. No, um. West Coast Diesel Annual Tractor Pull, one of four. The event is held annually at Sonoma County Fairgrounds in September. Custom made vehicles range from barn built to Cal Poly's Mustang Legacy. Sean. Two of four. The event requires tractors and trucks pull a 65,000 pound drag sled as far as possible. Similarity to a broad jump competition for engines is accurate. Three or four. The event started in 1929, attracts audiences from farm and ranch communities all over California and USA. This is Megan Olson prepping Savage Chick from Denaire, California. Four or four. Like all American sports, the goal is to experience the thrill of victory and avoid the agony of defeat, all while having a rip roaring good time. We have a sequence of pictures here showing a sport that's going on. The thing is, this is in photojournalism. Photojournalism, I think, is sort of a misnomer because it's actually two different things. One is photojournalism. The other is uh, human interest stories. So you have something where you may have a policeman arresting someone. You may have competing that against some little kid looking at a duck on the sidewalk. Given that, we have a sequence here, a set of images. And since there's only one competitor this time, obviously, this one's going to win. But look at the pictures. Enjoy the action that's going on. Enjoy the colors, the faces, the expressions, and all that. Next. Journalism A, four images. Elephant Park, one of four. At Nisna Elephant Park in South Africa, 
Visitors are encouraged to interact closely with elephants. Park rangers first instruct visitors how to behave when near the herd. Two of four. First contact with the elephants involves feeding, which allows guests and elephants to become comfortable with each other at close but safe distance. Three of four. After feeding, the elephants and guests meet in an open field where guests are provided a rare opportunity to touch and mingle with elephants in a national, natural setting. Four of four. At the Kanishna Elephant Park, you can feel that the backside of the elephant's ear is as soft as velvet, and you will acquire a much deeper appreciation for these gentle giants. What a fun set of pictures. You must have had a great time on that trip. There is so many stories going on. If you know where to look about the poaching in Africa, it gets really uncomfortable. But here you can see people coming up close. You can see the interaction between the people and the elephants and the elephants back to the people. So you have something going on, the background story of why you need to have rangers and protection against the people trying to kill them, the story of the elephants and the people getting to know each other slowly and then getting closer and interacting. Fun set of pictures. Next. Oh. Oh, next sequence. You can have me go to each photo if you want to speak about next, particular next, next person. Next sequence. Yeah. Well, why are you in the bathroom again? What? <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Are we okay? Yeah, we're okay. Street painting, one of three. The San Rafael Italian Street Painting Festival started in 1994. Each year, more than 100 street artists would make poster sized creations on the pavement. Two of three. Artists work from grids to create enlargement of new and existing artwork. Three of three. Even the kids get into it. Sadly, this year's festival was canceled even before COVID-19 due to funding issues. Oh, please. How much is it? Yeah. Two of these pictures are straight human interest journalism. The middle picture to me, it looks like a piece of art, or art of art of art, as you see three different levels in it. I really like this picture, just as a straight illustration. Next, please. Clinic, one of three, at St. Joseph's Mobile Acute Respiratory Clinic in Santa Rosa, California. The first stop in the car is the registration tent. Two of three. The physician, prepared for the exam, waits for the patient in a tent that contains only a table, chart, stethoscope, and otoscope. Three of three. After the exam, the physician approaches the car with instructions for the patient's next steps. An intern shadows him for the day. This is the unfortunate thing that we live with today. So this is straight photojournalism. It's also, of course, human interest because we are the victims. We're all the victims. We're seeing what's going on. So this is a good sequence showing some of what needs to be done today. And it, this is well done. Next. Doggy trash in fashion. <laughs> One of four. Rosie. The Dhaka Chihuahua dons recycled items creating canine haute couture to compete in Sonoma's 2019 Doggy Trash and Fashion Show. <laughs> Two of four. The stylish canine <laughs> competitor patiently awaits her turn on the runway. You can tell she's done this before. 
She's self-assured and ready to go. <laughs> Three or four. As tension builds, this chic canine contestant gets some last minute love and confidence building from her young humans. <laughs> four or four. It's your time, folks. And our stylish canine competitor, assisted by her hopeful human, finally gets to hit the runway and grab the prize. I mentioned that PJ has two different components, news and human interest. And based on the laughter, this fits the human interest really well. This is funny, it's sweet, the sequence is wonderfully done, it's excellent. Next. Journalism, double A, five images. Kukij, one of three. Kukij is a centuries old instrument in Hmong culture. It is most often played by the village headman at funerals to lead the deceased to his proper resting place. Two of three. The music is an extension of the tonal Hmong language. Each note symbolizes its own word. Each players are known as storytellers and do a stylized dance while playing. Three of three. Wow. The wood section, or wind chest, is made from two identical blocks of mahogany bound together by straps. The six bamboo tubes each have a finger hole above the wind chest. Wow. Another interesting uh, human interest style picture teaches me something I knew nothing about. It's well done. Next. Face masks, one of three. Mm -hmm. Sewing your own face mask is a necessity now. They are in short supply due to the coronavirus. Two of three. Material needs to be measured, cut, and assembled before sewing. Three of three. Extra masks are donated to people who need them. This fits as both news and human interest, unfortunately, based on the conditions we're living in. Uh, this first picture is showing a little bit of problem with color, temperature, but it's, it's a good picture. And it, sh it gives you a feel for what's going on, what needs to be done. Color temperature is fine here. I don't know what happened the first one. And the final picture, color temperature seems maybe a little bit off here, or maybe the background's yellow. Remember, in PJ, you can't modify the picture very much after you've taken it. It's not creative, it's not pictorial where pretty much anything goes. Next. Swarm, one of four. Aaron Gray and Susan Simmons of the Sonoma County Beekeepers Association have rushed to a Santa Rosa residence to generally transfer a swarm of honeybees into a cardboard box. Two of four. At Sierra Gardens, Claudine and Bob Letchow assemble a new hive box as Thea Verling brings the bees. Three or four, coaxing bees to move requires a light touch. Beekeepers have a supply of large feathers on hand for just that purpose. Mm. Four or four, Claudine signals a successful transfer. At Sierra Gardens, all proceeds from selling produce and honey go to scholarships for underserved Sonoma County youth. Another interesting sequence showing things that I didn't know about. I knew something about bees, but this shows a lot of things I didn't know. This particular picture is not totally clear. I think they're trying to show that sometimes it can be kind of messy to get into the swarm. The rest of the pictures are clear and easy to understand. Excellent job. Next image, next image. Done, next please. 
Search Divers, one of four. A public safety diver gets final checks before getting into the water to search for a reported possible missing person. Mm -hmm. At Point Marina, California, April 13th, 2019. Mm -hmm. Two of four. The search diver descends a ladder into the marina's slip, slips zero visibility water to look for a reported possible missing person. Three or four, the diver completes a search after tying a rope to a found object for surface personnel to bring to the surface. Four or four, search divers recover what was reported as a possible missing person that turned out to be a, a discarded crab pot in the murky water. Oh, good. <laughs> well done illustrations of um, important but sort of squicky uh, task. I have a personal interest in this. I'm ex Coast Guard and I've been on various rescues. Well done set of illustrations. Yeah. No, I didn't do that in the Coast Guard, but <laughs> I hope. Yeah. Next, please. Mystery solved. One of four. Visitors to the Eastern Sierra driving along 395 might have noticed what appears to be a Moorish temple rising from the eastern shore of the Crowley. <laughs> Before. Hidden for eons, the columns first emerged in 1941 when waves from the newly created reservoir began carving out the volcanic ash and pumice at the base of the cliffs. Three or four. In 2015, geologists yeah. from UC Berkeley used X ray analysis and electron microscopes on column samples to finally solve the mystery of the origin of these unique formations. Four of four, they concluded mm -hmm. that the columns are degassing pipes created 760,000 years ago by snow melt percolating down and steam rising up through the still heated porous volcanic rock. Wow, oh, that's cool. I knew of these, I'd seen them from 395, I hadn't visited them. This is an excellent set of photos. It shows what's going on. Um, I'm impressed, this is great. Um, I hope to go there someday. Um, this works quite well. Next, please. Journalism Masters. Four images. Youth March for Climate on September 29th, 2019 in Washington, DC. How will the global pandemic affect the environmental movement? I think this is a sequence. No, no. It isn't? No. Tango shot. Okay. The question here is excellent question. We certainly would not have a uh, protest demonstration like this again. Not for a long time. They're too close together. And we're going to have to wait and see what goes on. Does this count as photojournalism or human interest? I think this counts more as photojournalism because it's a news article. And then the key thing is what happens now that we have COVID going around? Next. Fort Ross, one of three. The annual festival last year included events for young people. One event that was popular with young and old alike was making bouquets out of dried flowers that were provided. Two of three. A young girl stands at the upstairs window of the barracks at Fort Ross to choose flowers for her bouquet. Aww. Three of three. The grandmother here is in charge of flower arrangements. Russian families come from all over the U.S. and even Russia to help with the festival that takes place in 
September. That's a sweet series. It's fun that it's in black and white. I was up at Fort Ross last year. And it was really neat. This picture series is excellent. It really shows off what's going on. Next. drive through COVID test, one of three. Temperature test, two of three. Doctor explains the upcoming painful part. Three of three, swabbing, but too pain painful to photograph the rest. I know I have a brain, they scratched it. <laughs> This is something we have to live with. This is news. It's sort of human interest and in some of these store, some of the text going with the titles are adding to the human interest, like avoiding the pain and all that stuff. So this is effective photojournalism. It's something that could certainly be published. Next, please. Do not enter as archetypes of young innocence paired with playful ghoulishness, brides of the dead emerge from a dark underground passageway at All Souls event for Dia de Muertos, Tucson, Arizona. I think I like the shadows on the second young woman a lot. Um, the first one has a bit of shadows on the other side. It's the shadows, the shadowy background, and then the slightly modified faces because of the big dark eyes, the sewn up lips and the white powder on it that just makes it more ghoulish and more exotic, more fantasy or horrifying. Interesting picture, well done. Next. Travel B, two images. Our pack trip in the Altai Mountains, Mongolia. Travel is supposed to show a uh, time and a place. And this is showing a place that doesn't really seem like California. Those don't look like the Sierras. They don't look like the foothills of the Sierras. We're too far away to really see the animals. So this qualifies as travel. And is an interesting view of a place that probably many of us would like to go see. Next. Artisan pours molten bronze into mold for gong making. Later, the bronze will be pounded into shape and tone. Bogar, Indonesia. Interesting topic to photograph. Interesting subject. Is it travel? This sort of thing goes on in Oakland at the Crucible. But in Oakland, they have a much stronger idea of what is the safety equipment you need when you're doing this sort of thing? So that means this is travel because it's not something that you're going to see around here. <clears throat> it gives you an idea of the place that this is going on is not in the US. It's a good image. It's interesting. I wish I had the chance to take this one. Next. Travel A, five images. Raining in Bath, England. Fun concept. All the umbrellas coming down. Lots of color, but I'm not totally getting a feel for where the place is. You can see the buildings in the background and they don't quite look like the greater Bay Area or Northern California, but I, I, I really don't have enough feel in this case that you're any place other than whatever. We need more information on the surrounding. Next. Badwater Basin is an endorheic basin in Death Valley National Park. and is the lowest point in North America at 282 feet below sea level. This is a really alien landscape. I'm sure you've all been to see it. It's really neat. It's different. Oh, heaven. And this is a fun image in that it shows the near part well, and then it's stretching on to the far distant mountain peaks and the clouds beyond. Well done image. 
Next. Walking the trails in Bryce Canyon National Park's main amphitheater is a maze-like experience. Down among the 20 to 30 foot hoodoos, the light always changes and there is something new around every corner. Another really neat photo. It shows a place that's pretty alien to almost any place in California. Um, well, it's actually alien to all of it. This is a place in California that kind of slightly sort of approach it. Well done image, it's fun, well done. Next. Azure, magnificent. Crater Lake's intense blue is due to its clarity and great depth. It is the deepest lake in the U.S. and ninth deepest in the world. Good image. It shows what's going on, good title. And this is the first picture of the night, I believe, that has an interesting sky. Some of the earlier pictures had a sky that was mostly blah, and the photographers wisely chose to minimize the sky in those pictures. In this one, they let about half the image be to the sky because the clouds are interesting in this case. So this kind of reminds me of Ansel Adams' National Park series, where the sky is a major part of the picture. Those pictures were meant to be printed big and hung up high, so you'd have to lean back and look at it. The sky would look more realistic. So this picture might also print very well as a very large image and be hung up, so you're looking up and seeing all the mass of the sky and the blue below. Fun picture. Next. South Point on Hawaii's Big Island features dramatic lava cliffs. Although at the southernmost point in the U.S., some with more sense of adventure than good sense opt to go a step further. Good title. <clears throat> the green on the upper right kind of bugs me. I don't know why it's there. I don't know what it means. Um, if it wasn't for the title, I wouldn't know anything except that it, they're jumping off lava cliffs, which could have been several places. So this does look like an ocean based on the wave, <clears throat> the lighter blue from a wave breaking up above. And you have action here. So good job. Next. Travel double A, four images. Your delivery, Hanoi, Vietnam. That's a critical item for a bunch of people in lockdown. That's what my sons are telling me. <laughs> this is a fine image. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of the front tire of the first vehicle, the beer motorcycle. The guy's expression is fine. The motorcycles behind him has a bit of a face that you can see. The whole thing works well together. And yet it doesn't look like the US. Next. The colorful sculptured painted hills of John Day Fossil Beds National Monument in Oregon were formed over 35 million years ago by ash layers deposited by ancient volcanic eruptions. This is well done. The clouds are good, but the photographer chose not to emphasize them. Normally, when you have a landscape, you need the foreground and the midground is important. But right here, it's the background, <clears throat> the John Day formation itself, that sort of bulges out like a fist coming at you. If it didn't have quite so many fingers, you might think it actually was a fist coming at you. Strong picture, well done, thank you. Next, yeah. Yellowstone, of Yellowstone National Park. Strong, cold image. It chooses not to show much of the sky because there's not much there. What, folks, is the problem when you're doing this kind of picture? Highlights. Highlights, what's another term for that in this case? Blown out highlights. <laughs> Getting texture off the snow. Mm. And this is done pretty well. There's detail in the snow all over the place. Next, please. The archer watches his second arrow approach the small target, a row of leather cylinders barely visible at a distance of 75 meters. Nadan competition, Gobi Desert, 
Mongolia. Incredible composition, incredible um, athletic ability, good costuming, uh, the arrow, bow and arrow set up differently than anything I've seen. Uh, this is all new to me. It's well done. Next. Travel Masters, six images. <laughs> Porto, Portugal, a scene partially reflected in the glass window of a restaurant along the Douro River. Porto was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1996. This is very colorful and interesting and unique, but the reflection versus direct is confused me a lot. I looked at it and several times when I was judging, trying to figure it out. And this particular picture with the way it's composed just leaves me confused. Also, the triangle in the upper left could be better, but the color, the colors are incredible. The colors are just lovely. I'm just a little bit confused. Next. Room with a view, Grouse Ridge, Tahoe National Forest. Mm. Huh. That tower is glowing. Lovely mm -hmm. image. I don't think I'll be able to get up there, but lovely image. Much more muted than the last one, but an interesting place with lots going on. Mm. Doesn't look like Santa Rosa. Doesn't look like the Bay Area to me. Must be travel. Next. Urban Canyon, Broadway, New York, New York. I'm glad to see a picture that is a panorama. I'm glad to see uh, images that are not one of the standard aspect ratios. And I'm glad to see a picture where the maker decided to make the aspect ratio fit the meaning, the content of the picture. Mm -hmm. This one does this very well. I don't know if it's a single image panel that was the sides chopped off or if they took several and pasted them together in post. But it works out very nicely. You can see how busy it is down there. You can see the skyscrapers, the shadows that come from them, the itty bitty bits of sunlight that managed to creep through in a very few places in here. It's a strong image and I think it's very good. Thank you. <clears throat> in a small village in remote rural Kenya, most Samburu women still dress in a traditional manner. Their style of earrings, beadwork, and clothing mark them as married women. Strong image, good black and white conversion, excellent shows the people, their costuming, you get an idea of their thoughts. Um, just an excellent overall image. Well done. Next. The Upper Peninsula of Michigan is a secret to most, but it is a wonderland of fog, bogs, critters, and amazing skies for people who love the outdoors. This is a lovely picture. I really like this picture. The skies are beautiful. The reflections are beautiful the sun peeking between the trees. This whole comes together really nicely, but is it travel? What would make this different than someplace in California? Does it actually need to be different than someplace in California? It's certainly not Santa Rosa. It's certainly not the greater uh, Bay Area. It is a different place, so this would count as travel. Nicely done. Next. Days. Faded Amulet of Thai Man's Master Teacher is a John Crew worn over mystical Sak Yan tattoos of ancient symbolism derived from old local shamanic traditions integrated into Buddhist teachings. Yeah. Bangkok. This doesn't look like the tattoos you see in the U.S. very much. <laughs> Doesn't look like gang tattoos. It looks like something relating to Buddhism, which leaves me to have a different feeling than it would if I saw a person with gang tattoos like this. So this gives me an impression that this is not something local and it works as a travel image. 
further than that, while the person's skin and all that is dark, the amulet is bright and colorful and has great contrast with the skin and makes it a focal point to focus your vision right into the center. Well done. Next. And we will break for about 10 minutes and you can socialize or go off screen, whatever you wish. I thought the timing went very well on that, Steve. Uh, I did too. Went just fine. Uh, there wasn't a lot of interaction. Uh, the audio at times, uh, I have hearing problems and sometimes that makes it difficult for me. I guess we're not used to commenting anyway, but. I didn't actually get commenting going. Okay. Um, I'll probably do more later. I don't find the commenting works too well for um, travel and PJ. It works better for the more artistic things. The technical <laughs> side that you can't modify uh, things very much in PJ and travel, to my mind, restricts the amount of commenting that can be done. We'll see. As I've thought about it, um, at later when we're doing the awards, and then the photographer makes comments, mm -hmm. um, the other members and the judge can also comment at that time. Perhaps mm -hmm. that's uh, what we're more used to, actually. Um, might that work for you? Yeah, yeah, as long as, well, we have a lot of, I don't, we, we probably have a lot of images to go yet. So we'll just play it by ear. I think so far the comments have been fine. Yes. Good. Okay. Greg, are you glad that you didn't have to drive all the way up from Half Moon Bay? No, I'm sad. Oh. I have a lot of memories, good and bad, of the Santa Rosa area. Yeah. One of my sons um, went to school there and graduated with a bio degree. He's now in Amsterdam working on drugs that may help with COVID. Yay! Um, I have friends up there, and unfortunately, uh, a family is very close to uh, ended up with someone near Santa Rosa who fed him a bunch of Kool Aid. A bunch of what? Kool Aid. Oh. The family died. Oh. I'm sorry. Jim Jones. Wow. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh my gosh. Wow. Is that the bad memories you were referring to? That is the unhappy memories. I'm, I'm sorry. To correct. Well, like I said, my, one of my sons, one of my three favorite sons, <laughs> the youngest of the three by four and a half minutes. <laughs> Are they triplets? Than the I, oldest I, of my friends. I didn't realize you had triplets. Plus one. Plus yes. One. Mm -hmm. My daughter has a double E degree and a computer science degree. We need smart people to get us out of this mess. <laughs> yes. Uh, we need to win the election more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Amen. Oh, yeah. I told my kids to forget their inheritance. I'm donating it right now. <laughs> Wise choice. Uh, but Santa Rosa is really beautiful. Uh, my son is a bio and worked at Safari West uh, oh. as a driver for years. And he oh, loved yeah. the there. What's his name? David Edwards. He's a happy-go-lucky, friend-of-all-the-world sort of guy. My other two sons, and especially my daughter, are much more serious. Uh -huh. Nice to have a mix. We need a balance yeah. in this world. Yeah. I'm glad to say all of my kids are better at socializing than I was at that age. Mm -hmm. I didn't become good at getting along with people, so I started teaching. A lot of us have been to Safari West and we love that place. 
Uh, I've, I've been there three times. It's great. It's a treasure. Yes. What is its status? Is it open? No. no they're keeping it go going. The, the volunteers and the workers are all there taking care of the animals. And, uh, and, and they don't know when they'll open for, uh, yeah. for the public. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we had the fire that the yeah. owner stood there with, uh, with the, with a hose and saved a yes. uh, thousand animals. Yeah, a lot of people got hurt there. I've been there. Yeah. My sister-in-law lives near there. We had to drive through to see her. Wow. Well, we had That's planned to go time. to go there for my 70th birthday in July. Might open. First big uh, outdoor Maybe. museum's open today. Yes. Oh, yes. That's right. Ronnie. Yes. You're a month. You're a month older than me. <laughs> uh, I I don't I don't think anybody could tell really. <laughs> We're all whippersnappers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had I to step away for a while. I just came back. What's going on? Chatting about Safari We're West. Talking and about you, Greg's oh. family. Are we ears burning? Are we having a break? Kind of. Yeah. You need to change the light bulb in the projector. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, I like it. How many people did it take? Yes. Did you want to talk about photographers? Sorry. Yeah. Did you want to talk about Tony's program coming up? Um you know, I think it would be great if Tony talked about Tony's program coming up. Is he here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he that's. Uh, it turned into a complete rabbit hole. Um, the subject of composition is about the most complicated thing I've ever tried to figure out how to explain to other people. Um, it's going to be a long presentation. Right now, it's about 120 slides. <laughs> you mean images or? Slides. Oh, slides. Uh, oh, multiple slides. images on slides. Looking forward to it, Tony. Yeah. Four well, oranges. It's good. <laughs> you may want to record it. It may be great for going to sleep. <laughs> oh, I doubt that very much. I'm game. Does it have music with it? Pardon? Does it have music that'll lull us to sleep? <laughs> no, that's extra work. Oh, okay. Oh, no. no. <laughs> that's going to be on May 28th, right? Right. Okay. Remote. Oh. Right. And I just want to say that Tony can be hilarious. So bring some of that, okay, Tony? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it's a great subject. It's a tough subject. You'll do it justice. <laughs> Thank you. You might be able to divide it into part one and part two if it's too much. Yeah, in case we can't fill up our uh, program schedule. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we have enough people go going for masters. With it. it should be, our, you know, pretty easy to fill up the program. Yeah, I think we have Nick for July, and Anne and Tim are going to be in August, right, Anne? She might, just, she might be on a break. Stepped away. Yeah. They took care of this year for you, didn't they, program committee? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> By the way, if anyone needs help when they're doing a presentation to use Zoom, oh, wow. contact me if you don't have Zoom yourself uh, for hosting a meeting. There's a, a lot of wonderful YouTube uh, shorts taking you through it both in terms of how to do it and if you're using powerpoint how to integrate it great okay
Greg, is that any place in the background we should know? Yeah, two years ago. Uh, I know what that is. Oh, I know, I'm Zaborego. No, no, I'm oh. sorry, Carrizo Plain. Yep, wonderful place. Yep. But a yeah, yeah. Year, it's just unreal. Yeah, we went three times for the, for the Super Bloom. Yeah. And, and along with Anza Borrego, we hit uh, each each time we hit uh, that coming. You hit it at a beautiful time. It was those along Seven Mile Road back there. Yes. That what you call it road? Uh, yeah, fabulous. Yeah, we went twice for a week each. Um, yeah, I've been to Anza Borrego twice and st struck out with the flowers, but. The uh, dragon at night was really wonderful. Oh, were you, were you there before or after the fire out in Palm Canyon? I was not there at that time. I didn't even know about it. All right, Steve, okay, we're, ready to go? we're ready to proceed. Yeah. Okay. Um, one moment. <laughs> and one. <clears throat> Should we mute ourselves? Please don't. Okay. Monochrome B, three images. Reflection. I love this image from the instant I first saw it. Just excellent. That said, anyone have anything that they'd change in this image? Yes. Uh, the bottom edge. What about it? Oh, you could do a... At Edge Patrol, there's that yes. light that puts the eye down there. Right, there's a little bit of brightness in the lower right hand corner. Mm -hmm. But overall, the image, you know, with the bright in front with the black behind at the top, the black in front with the light behind below, just, just came out really wonderful. It's just a mm -hmm. shame that the bottom is a little bit lighter than it should be. Mm -hmm. Good image. Next. Okay. Anemones. This is another lovely image. We mentioned Border Patrol in the last one. Uh, this has a little bit of a problem with it, so we won't talk about it much. But here you can see all the veins. And what would you change in this image? Don't, don't talk about the border. We already know that. Straighten it a bit. You could have it straight, or you could have a tip to give it dynamic tension. Either way is good. That's a good observation. What else? More symmetry. Symmetry sometimes is good. This sort of thing, symmetry might be good. Anyone have anything else they note? Focus on the right pedal. What is a, that's a good point. The question is, what is the right place to focus? The focus to me should be in the center pedals, and they actually seem to be one layer back. So the front pedals, the ones closest to you, are a little bit off. Also, I think that since you can't really see the stem, the image should be a little bit lower on the screen so you have a little bit more on top. Otherwise, it feels like it's tipping over. The fact that the image is tipped makes it even more, to my mind, feel like I'm falling. Next. Kanaka Nunui, giant, American agave. Agave Americana. This was fun to watch, to see, because I'm working on a series like this. There's some uh, yucca type plants that live near where I am. It's just really fun playing with the thorns in the photos and the depth of field that you get layer and layer and layer. Looking at this image, the borders are fine. Not much vignetting, but not needed. The near thorns are sharp. There's adequate sharpness throughout the whole thing. What might you change here? Anyone? A little contrast? A little more? Yeah, I think a little bit more contrast would help, mm -hmm. especially on the nearest things. Because the further things having lower contrast, most of the time 
when you're looking at pictures in nature, the nearest things have the high contrast, the more distant things are lower contrast. So that gives you a built-in clue of distance is the lower contrast. Thank you. Good. Next. Out of Prom A, nine images. Brisky Point, Death Valley National Park. If you haven't been here, go. This is just an absolutely unreal place. And you've got wonderful skies. Looks like you use a red filter in post to make the skies really dark. We mentioned earlier that you have haze on some of the other pictures, but Death Valley is high enough and dry enough that the haze, the lower contrast and distance, does not apply anywhere near as much as it does in many of the other pictures that we see tonight and probably will see in the rest of the night. Hmm. Any changes anyone would make? No. I think this is a wonderful I picture. Well, I would ground it a bit more with some darkness at the bottom. Fair hmm. point. There's a little bit more grounding that could be done. Anyone else? I'm getting some black at the top that looks like it might be an artifact. That's hard to say in this case. Um, I've been using Zoom a lot. I've been using software pursuits on the same images. And sometimes we get defects through Zoom. Sometimes uh, software pursuits <laughs> seem to have the defect. Um, I did not see any defects when I was using software pursuits to look at it. But that does happen. First of all, the cloud on the center, a uh, little one right near the left, and then just down below that, I wouldn't mind seeing more separation in the edge, either cloning out that one little cloud and the two little bands down there. Mm -hmm. Would keep your eye from going too far to the left. Okay. Anyone else? Next. Caught in time. Hmm. Straight black and white classical study, shadows, light, iron, stone, vegetation, old tools, classic study. I might have added a little bit more vignetting, but um, that may be because I've been doing pictures of late in the pastoralist style, and that often uses a lot of vignetting. Anything, anybody have any comments with this picture? The dynamic range is very dark and very light, and I don't know. I, I think, think that's I would want more contrast in, in the bright areas. I think that's deliberate in this case. Good point. Next. Cross. Mm -hmm. Oh. That brings a smile. Yep. We have the catch lights in the giraffe on the left, I mean the right, or do I mean the left? <laughs> the other giraffe is not interested in us at all. No. <laughs> this is a humorous black and white picture. What would you like to see different here? I'd pull up the shadows in the uh, neck on the left. The neck on the lower part on the left yeah. and yeah. underneath the throat of the giraffe that's leaning to the left. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. What else? Maybe around the eye. Yes. What else? There's a lot of gray space, you know, or white. Yes. White space. I would maybe, you know, you talk about a vignette or yes. maybe some kind of texture, something. You can do lots of things with that gray space. It's legal to change the entire gray space out to whatever you want, as long as the picture you made. It could be high key, make it white. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it could be. Mm -hmm. that yeah. could be. Or black. Be on a glacier. No, let's not put it on a glacier. <laughs> White would be good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Gray is a little bit too gray. But it's a fun picture. It's making people smile and laugh. Mm -hmm. Actually, Next. black would be interesting because it would make the white stand out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next image, please. Back glasses. Another classic black and white. It's sort of centered and sort of not centered. It's got a lot of dark. It has a few really bright things where you have glint off the windows. What, if anything, would you want to change here? 
Darken the right hand side a little. Yeah. Darken the right hand side. What else? Mm -hmm. Top glass on the left to be darker, just a touch. Top glass on the left to be darker. And I'll go a little bit further. Bring the top down by a few pixels so you don't have that little band of light that's a little bit confusing yeah. right yeah. at the top. Yeah. Good point. Oh, yeah. And also trim off a little bit on the left hand side just to make the whole thing a little bit more off balance. Good image. Next. Forever waiting, a heart of cold stone, lips the same for so long, for so many years. They say it all will take, they say all it will take is a prince. And this oh. A sweet title, a sweet picture of a young girl in a dreary, old, dismal place. It's hard to do an original picture of a statue. It's almost impossible. This one does a pretty good job, however. Any changes people would want to see? The light to the left of her nose, that area, to me is a little distracting. Yeah. Too bright? Yeah, the brightness. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yep. Yeah, right hand Looks side. like prison bars and prison light behind it mm -hmm. that's a little bit bright. Yeah. What else? Well, I think it must be a cemetery. Or inside a church or a castle or palace. Mm -hmm. I the really dark, don't know. The dark spike there on the left. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Unknown what that is. So it's kind of thought provoking. True. Mm -hmm. That's a picture that makes you think a bit. Next, please. Marion Pride. I like this image. It's got a lot of go, go, explosion, fun. It's nice and crisp, has good tonality. How is the vignetting in this picture? I think it works good. I like it. It has an awful lot of vignetting, and normally I'd say no. But I think it works, as someone else mentioned. It works well in this case. Mm -hmm. Any changes anyone would like to see? I'd like to see some selective softening. Where? I'm not sure. Um, I think maybe in some of the feathers to bring out, um, to simplify them so that they're not so distracting. It'd okay. be a hard one. I'd have to play with it. I, I agree. OK, if you're using a Luminar, you can put on the Orton filter. And that's real easy yep. to do. But conversely, another thing you could do is to add contrast, add uh, sharpness to the metal parts of this costume to make them appear more metallic. I wouldn't do anything to his skin. Well, you wouldn't tone down his chest a little? I don't think that's needed. It is bright. But I don't think it's uh, all the way to the right. It's just, it's bright in comparison to everything else here. Yeah, I could see Orton effect around the outer edges and then keeping it good detail towards the middle of it. Yeah, it's fun uh, brushing in Orton in some areas and brushing on uh, various forms of sharpness and structure in other areas. Yep, and I do that a lot. Things pop more. Absolutely. Next, please. Along the K. <laughs> and we have a row. And we have a whole thing of composition with a line leading us from the lower left to the upper, well, to the middle right, with a whole bunch of leading clues. What changes would you want to see in this image? I'd like to see more of the rest of the arrow. Maybe get down a little further. That's my favorite part. Good point. What else? I'd, burn I'd say uh, if you moved a little to the left so that you can get a perspective on both the street and the motorcycles. Or the Excellent. Mm -hmm. I would too. That would be great. Yeah. Anything I would, else? I would burn in the lights a little bit. They're pretty bright. Yes. Especially yeah. the first one. Yeah, and also it looks to me like if you, if you brought them down a bit, you might get a little bit more uh, star flares out of them. They're yeah. there, but they're not really quite easily seen. Yeah. If you brush a little more contrast on the windshield, it wouldn't be so uh, cloudy. Yeah. 
We could also put dehaze, clarify or texture on the windshield. And one of those might work even better. Good point. If you are using Luminar, you don't have texture. But if you pop your image over to Adobe Camera Raw, you have texture there and you can play with it. Okay, next. Edgy iris. I agree. Edgy and confused. I thought for a while it was a starship from some science fiction novel. You've got a lot going on, but it's also... What would you folks say about this image? It looks like a topaz effect. Mm -hmm. The background does, you're right. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about the iris itself, but I find the iris, to my mind, is a little bit muddy. I'm That's... missing separation. Say again? I'm missing separation, tonality. Yeah. And there's a halo around the, uh, the, the eagle and the hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, next. Lone tree. Okay, this is a really different image because it's just basically black and white and it has an uh, artificial border added in. It's a very different image than all the stuff we've seen earlier, but it's a good image. It also doesn't show much of the sky. It doesn't show much grounding. It just shows a tree looking up. The grounding that it has is basically the heavy trunk at the bottom. I think this picture works. What do you folks think? I like how the border, it's like it's holding it in. Yeah. It wants to get beyond it, but it can't. Yeah. You know all the rules in photography about you don't have a branch sticking off the edge? If you ever in Santa Fe, go to the George O'Keefe Museum, and she has a lot of pictures of various kinds of plants sticking branches right off the edge of the paintings. Hmm. Next. Monochrome double A, eight images. Present the yard. This image has a lot of presence. It really makes you feel there. The contrast is excellent. The action is there. I like this picture a lot. Any comments from anyone? Let's move on. That was too easy. This is another great image. Morning park. <laughs> I really like this image with the brightness on his face, everything else dimming down around him. He's staring off in the distance. You've got the white, you've got the black, you've got tonalities. I think this is an excellent image. Totally. Yeah. Next. Love the shadows. Yeah, good, wonderful shadows. Next. Early morning train, Long Beyond Bridge, Hanoi. We have motion blur, which is fun. You have a pretty sharp bridge. You have stuff on the bridge. You have the bridge seems to be sort of broken uh, with a handrail in front, I'm not totally sure. So there's a lot going on in this picture, but it doesn't have the pop of the first picture, and it doesn't have the human connection of the second picture. How can what you about twist, picture? What about turning it? Turning it how? Well, it's headed uh, right to left, and we read mm -hmm. left to right, so have it headed the other way. That's the a possibility. Section of it headed uh, on the left to switch it. That's a good point. What else? Okay, let's move on. Cat. Mm. I love the still life. Uh, nice. I wonder how long it'll take the hat to blow away in the wind. <laughs> we have too much wind in Half Moon Bay for a hat like this, but the shadows, the cross shadows at the bottom, the dimples, the eye dimples. We have an alien monster here. I, th I, I really love this picture. I thought it was a lot of fun. Great texture. It is yeah, cool. really. Yeah, I'm going to play with Alien. Any what changes? Is? Go ahead. Alien would be a great title. Yeah. <laughs> Needs a couple of eyeballs. I agree. Next. I like this quilty, yeah. Wonderful. H takes a toll on the Guardian. 
that's true. This is another statue picture. I mentioned statues are really difficult to do. And this picture to me isn't working too well. The center of the head is very centered in the image. The tonality range is awfully harsh. It's there are a lot of distractions. Curve. It's got a lot of curves. You can follow the eye of the lion. You can see with various things, other things going on. But it, it's a little bit harsh for me. Anybody else have any comments? A lot of distractions. The background texture and the texture of the lion are all very similar. How do you clean that up? Burn the background would be a start and then yes. create. Um, more detail by yes. dodging, verting the lion. Yes, you might also try textures. I don't mean yeah. Adobe's textures. I mean the original meaning of textures, an overlay to add something. Yeah, uh, blur that background. That that that. Yeah. Yes. Maybe reduce the contrast in the background. Mm-hmm. Start going to reduce the contrast. Good points. Next, please. CrossFit training. Wow. Wow. He's working hard. He's concentrating. This is a good portrait. You've got lots of good shadows. You have lights. It shows the muscles, the skin. It shows the concentration of her face, of her mouth, the eyes looking a thousand miles out, the hair going a little bit crazy. This is an effective picture. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. Any changes people would like to see? A few little spots I'd probably take out of it. Down around her wrist? Yeah, and the elbow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On the right side. Oh, yeah, on the right side. And the left. contrast is a little heavy. Personal. Okay. Things, but Next. I mean, it's a look. I love that image. Just a ridge. Hmm. Now we have an old woman. We have this aged skin. Look at all those beautiful wrinkles that catch and hold the light and give us shadows and give us eye spots on the hand and on the foot and up on the chest. This is such an interesting, different sort of picture. Mm -hmm. I think it comes out really well. Really Anything good. people would like to see changed? Very lovely. Great. Yes, the yes. like ratio is very nice. And it's very nice having the knee go off screen. Yeah. I love the hand and the foot, the yeah. closeness of the group. <laughs> Wrinkles in I the elbow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love it too. Next. Sand, wind, and time. Mm. This is a wonderful picture of sand dunes. Just lovely, lovely sand dunes, the sinuous curves and spills, the darks, the lights. What might you change in this picture? I'd like to see more contrast. More contrast where? In the sky. Yeah. Yes, the sky. Is that a sky or is that just a mountain range? No, it's mountain background. Range. Mountain range, background. Mountains there. It's I'd be tempted to crop that a little. Yeah. yeah, crop the hell out of that top. Uh, yeah, make it a pano. <laughs> Ruthless. Panos are always great. Get away from the standard four by five or two by three or one by one aspect ratio. You can actually kind of date the kind of picture that people grew up with. Did you start with a Hasselblad or a twin lens reflex? If so, you probably like square. You start with 35 millimeter slide, then you probably like two to three. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see more tonality. It's all pretty much in the gray range. Yeah. Yes. Some whites. Agreed. What if you darkened the the what if the sky or whatever that is at the top? When I have a picture I like a lot, I'll make at least a dozen versions. If I don't like the picture, I'll probably make four or five versions. Then put them aside for a day or two and go back and look at them again. I'd mm -hmm. suggest trying a bunch of different things in a picture you like. Put it aside for a little bit to refresh your mind and go back and say what works, what doesn't work. To me, that's one that I would change the contrast in different areas to make it darker 
on the edges and in the mountain in the background, I darken that way up and increase contrast. Just make it so that it was the lower contrast, more interesting detail in areas you wanted people to see. Right, and don't forget dehaze, clarity, mm -hmm. and texture, which may help with the background. Let's yeah. move on because we don't want to stay too late. Long drive home. <laughs> it's going to be a hard 100 foot plod. <laughs> Monochrome Masters, eight images. Night out. Mm. This, this is a fun piece of street photography. And I'm weak in street photography, but even I can see that this is fun. Just the two people standing with shadows, a little spool of lightness. I like this picture a lot. Yeah. Next, please. Some say that 90% of the indigenous people were gone within 200 years of America's discovery by the Europeans. These petroglyphs in southern Utah look like people are going into the sandstone. Mm. Nice. Well done. Yes. That said, what might you change? A little bit of contrast. Yep. What else? Melody. Mm. Well, the stone to the, the left is really a little right. bit more. Yeah. The stone on the le upper left is a little bit bright. Yeah, it could be darkened or crop in a little bit. Mm -hmm. It does have a feeling of a sort of ghostly feeling, yes. like you're walking away, which yes. more contrast contrast might be a problem with. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Terry. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like that feeling of of ethereal. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd probably vignette it and then add a little bit of Orton effect to the middle to kind of soften it, but increase the contrast. Yes. Just see how it worked. Okay, next. Where did you say we were going again? <laughs> <laughs> good ghostly effects here. Good silhouette. Hard to see where they're going. <laughs> this is a fun picture. Mm -hmm. I might put in a little bit more vignetting, especially in the lower right. But this picture works. Mm -hmm. Next. Hand me down handbags. Maasai family, Kenya, 2019. Oh. One kid's preening, another kid's sort of defiant. The mother is working on something. Handbags, I guess. As a black and white image, this works very well. Um, it's got a lot of vignetting. Even so, there's a little bit of brightness. On the lower left, I might dodge out. But there's some black and white images that, to my mind, are kind of muddy. And there are others like this one, or the train engine at the beginning, uh, that are just really stand out and give a real pop to the picture. Anyone want to change anything in this other than a little bit of trimming on the left? Nope. I could Great. see a one teeny bit more contrast with the cloth. The white in the cloth is. A little flat to me. Okay. Next. Free of humankind. Mm. Lots of sinuous rills running off into the sky. Lots of interesting things for you to follow with your eye. <laughs> no, I wasn't trying to rhyme. <laughs> Not that time. Um, what might you want to do with this picture to make it pop more? Yet. Maybe more birds. <laughs> Bring the background. The down, this maybe. might be good. This, this is a great picture. However, the real story is in the center between the two trees. So just bring it in closer and make that the picture. Maybe. Anyone else? I'll point out that you might want to play with the sky. You have clouds there. Mm -hmm. They are pretty some playing around, like maybe using a red filter, maybe using more contrast. Wouldn't hurt the trees much, but might make the clouds stand out more. Hmm. One thing can be done with a lot of these images that I've been working with is uh, the uh, hue saturation slider and luminance slider. Mm -hmm. And you can choose individual colors to and. And in black and white, for example, if you have blue in the sky, you can make that 
really dark or really white by just adjusting the luminance and yep. in that uh, slider yes. in Lightroom. Yeah. And I think the other programs have it, but I'm not familiar with they that. Do. You know, greens can do that, oranges. Good point. Next. London, Salisbury Road. A shopkeeper takes a break. Well, it looks like he wants to talk to us. We have direct eye contact. He's a little bit off center, which is good. You've got, he has enough light in him. It's dark around him. So he sort of is being, you're being forced to focus on him. What changes might you folks want to see? You've got catch eye, but I would perhaps brighten it up a bit even more. It said that the eyes are the soul of the person. And when I'm doing portraits, I spend more time in the eye than anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with you. Next. Yeah. Widows walk. Wow. <laughs> Indeed. No. This is something that to my mind was mind bending, trying to figure out where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Is this Escher? Um, this is a fun image. Any changes people would want to do? I'd bump up the contrast. Yeah. Look at the tonality. Mm -hmm. I might clone out that little band on the bottom left. Good Me point. too. Interrupt Good point. I agree. Yeah. Yep, same here. I was just looking at that. Next. Worth the effort. <laughs> wow. Uh, Beautiful light. landscape. Beautiful shadows and bright things across a very muscular young guy. Any changes you folks would like to see? Nope. <laughs> Tonalities are perfect. Yep, that this yep. is a very good image. <laughs> Next, the light on his eye is very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the backlight. Wow. Pictorial, Pictorial B, five images. We're going to San Francisco. Be <laughs> sure to wear some flowers in your hair. I like color splashes. I seem to have a lot of judges who don't like them when I used. <laughs> this is fun. I like this image. Any changes you folks would like to see? I'd like to see more on the bottom and less on the top. Yeah, it'd be good since you have the people there to ground them by letting you see that they're standing on something rather than being chopped off at the knee. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you need red on the right. Correct. Mm. Right. The awning on the right and the red curb maybe it's not needed it's the flowers that are the fun i might zap out the sign in the window okay yeah there's Next. a bright below the stop sign there's a bright white area i'd probably reduce that down and then just turn the luminance down on the right on the right okay next image I also increase the brightness of the sign wicked so it's a little more apparent hmm. You have good vision. I know, really. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Should I or shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Should. We've stolen our lands. This is my chance. How come you guys have so many statue pictures? I've never seen three statue pictures in one club's competition on one night before. But this is a good picture of the statue with a guy there. It makes sense and makes the image come together. Note that the statue is grounded. He's standing on what looks like a rock. He's firmly there. We've got lots mm -hmm. of interesting textures from the pantina in the sculpture. And then you have the cowboy who is wearing reasonable cowboy clothes and is standing unaware of the <laughs> thoughtful Indian. Of the danger. This is one that could also be switched. So the man was on the right, which would lead you left to right. True. Mm -hmm. I'd probably darken it where, where the man is at. Kind of get that area a little bit darker. Yeah. Okay. 
What's interesting is this is one of those classic street scenes that usually has like graffiti or some kind of ad behind, but instead it's kind of really unique in that it is a statue that creates that tension. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's good seeing. Yeah, I agree. I like to see some room above the statue. Maybe a little bit more. A little more would be nice above and below a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Next image, please. Masked. Hmm. Well. This is a confusing image, but you have a lot of texture. You have a lot of swirls and leading lines that lead you twined and twirling in and out and twisting all about and the big blue behind it. So it's a strong color image. I see that he's wearing a mask, which I think is like wonderful. That it led me to see that. Uh -huh. Okay, next image. Looks like one of the turtles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Delphiniums in the morning. This is beautiful, but what changes might you folks want? Focus. Focus. Yeah, yeah I want something sharper. You need mm -hmm. something that's in good focus. One thing you can do that can help, whether it's windy or not, is put the camera in rapid fire mode and take a burst. And you, your body's going to move a little bit. And even with a really good focusing system, sometimes you'll be in focus, sometimes you won't but you'll have a better chance of getting something good in focus. Good point. I have a, use a camera that has an extremely good focusing system. Even so with this sort of picture, not everyone comes out sharp. Next. Solitary, source of life, Namibia. Well done, well-known location, well done image. It's been done a lot, but this is still done well. And you can see the streaks on the right, which don't show up in most of the images. And you have the fun trees right towards the center. I think this image works very well. In spite of it being done before, this is a little bit different rendition than what most people have. Any changes people would like to see? You said Make the sky a darker. Make the sky a little bit darker. Someone else said something? Halo. The upper right edge on the sand has a bit of a halo. Yes. I do, I do some spotting in the the main part of the dune on the left. There's right. some spots there that could be cleaned up. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that lower portion on the left of the of the dune just darkened, so it made that tree stand out a little bit more in the detail on the right dune. To me, that that blank area of the dune is a little less interesting than the right side. Yeah. I'm thinking there may be some sand being blown off. And that's why center bottom is sort of glowing. It's because of uh, light on the sand that's in the air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting mm -hmm. image. Next, please. Pictorial A, 12 images. Reflections of Petaluma's past. Mm -hmm. Good effective image, in focus, sharp, exposed well. How well will it do? It kind of depends on the other images in competition tonight. Next. Tidal waves. I love this image. I'm not sure which beach it is, but the effect is just beautiful. The clouds are one of the best set of clouds we've had tonight. The waves, sand, and wind stuff, all is coming out really well. Lots of leading lines, lots of great hills. Excellent image. Any changes you folks would like to see? I'd like to see some selective lighting on the hills and maybe some mood. I don't know, darker sky or, I think a lot could be done with it. Yeah. What else, anyone? If I was retaking it, I'd take it with less sand and more sky. The thing is, when you're out in the field, you may not be able to go back with the same conditions. Unless you have a pure 
blue sky, you probably won't have the same conditions again. So try a bunch of variety. This person may have taken 50 pictures and thought this one was best. That's wonderful. After all, uh, digital film is not very expensive. <laughs> you go out and try because you don't know till later what will really work out best. Next. Sunday morning. <laughs> I love the glow coming through the leaves. You have inherent a lot of vignetting, though the lower left coming in a little bit, I think I'd need to darken that. Those leaves are a little bit too bright. You have the humor of the someone's boot doing up there for some reason I don't know. Fun image. Any changes you'd want to see? Next. Stained glasscape. Just inside Mercury's orbit, the solar wind heats glasscape to a yellow orange. The deep valleys are cooler, darker. The leading edges glow brightly in the heat of the sun. <laughs> this is a beautiful abstract. I wonder if the title is actually, if it, from the title, I wonder if this is actually based on a, a mathematical physics model or not, but it's a beautiful abstract. Any changes people would want to do? It looks like a chihuly. It very much does. I thought of that when I first saw it. What else? Sharpness. Right edge. Right edge is missing. Yeah. Just above center on the right side. You'd really want to see that curve. Mm -hmm. There are some spots that could be taken out, like the left edge and up at the top uh, edge of the piece. Are those reflections from the light overhead or something else? Could be. I'm not talking about the whites, but in the black, there are light areas that. Yeah, you need to be really careful with zoom, uh, possibly putting artifacts and things. Mm. You know, so the, the maker could, should consider that, but not be, not be dominated by our opinion because we're not looking at the real image. Yeah. Next. Willie's chair, number three. That's fun. Yeah. And we have spot color again, but in a different way than before. Subtle. Yeah, very. Next. Wanderer. Mm -hmm. oh. 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 Gorgeous. Oh. Yeah, I love oh. this image. Anybody oh. know the secret to why the stones are purplish blue? Photoshop. Nope. <laughs> Magnesium, I don't know. The canyons like this, if you're there late in the year, so or you have the sun at a low angle, it's picking up a lot of light from the blue sky. And that's the real color that you have. Oh, hmm. interesting. So if that. you go back to Antelope Canyon, you go in November, you get very different colored dark rocks than in July. Mm -hmm. Are we uh. hearing noise? There is noise, apparently. I love the tumbleweed. I love the tumbleweed too. <laughs> yeah. And that makes the shot. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Other ones you Different see. texture. Next. Mm -hmm. Feed me. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. Good title. Good idea. Well executed. And it's the third picture of the night. It's using interesting vertical creative aspect ratios to make it fit the image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well done. Love Next. that colors. Next, please. Brief farmhouse, morning light. This is very foggy. Very soft. It's not in focus. I don't think it's meant to be in focus. It's more of a foggy painting view. You've got a lot of interesting details in the foreground. You've got the farmhouse, the big building up there in the right location, a little bit off center. You've got interesting sky and some creative stuff in the sky. It's just a lovely, ethereal, filmy, dreamy sort of picture. Mm -hmm. Are there any changes you'd like to see without getting it sharper? Because I don't think sharpness is what the guy was after here. Very slightly. 
to bring up some of the whites and blacks very subtly though. Yeah, that might help. Hmm. What else? I'd like to see just a little bit of warmth in the sky. Okay. I'm bothered by the tree on the right. Yeah, me too. Let's okay. Let's go on. Portrait of a Karakir. This is a well done image. It's sharp, it's in focus. You can see the bird's eyes, uh, the legs, what's standing on. The background has been thrown way out of focus. I think I might like to see its head, uh, the face a little bit brighter, it's a little bit dim, and a little bit more contrast pop on the eyes. Mm -hmm. Next. Hunting the Laguna de Santa Rosa. This is interesting. You can see a story in the logs here. Mm -hmm. And you also have sort of the dreamy effect of we've seen in another, at least one other picture. You have a good sky there, very mysterious. Any changes you folks would like to see? Same thing, subtle changes in the white and dark points. Okay, I'd like to see a bit more vignetting. I'd like the lower left vertical part and some of the lower left uh, horizontal uh, darken because they're a little bit bright. Upper left corner also. The texturing is nice though. It's fun, I agree. It's like a story, a little story, child mm -hmm. story. Agreed. Do you think it would be a good idea to make that bird a little more visible or is it an Easter egg? What bird? Well, oh, there it is. It's an Easter egg. <laughs> Obviously, an <laughs> Easter egg. <laughs> nice, thank you. Next image, please. Oh, that bird. <laughs> no, this bird. Ladybug. This ladybug bird. Okay, some bit more detail in under the ladybug, since it would be in the same plain some some more focusing around in the in the flower but i love the coloring mm -hmm. coloring's fun the eye bug the eye of the ladybug seems to be really well in focus yeah. and i think that's all that's needed yeah it has a bit of reverse vignetting which gives it a different way of sort of a mystical feel it's the only picture tonight as i recall it's using reverse vignetting. Yeah. Next. A day in the area. Oh. Oh. Nice. You get an old fashioned feel here. It looks like a sort of a sepia picture rather than color. And the person says it's in an aviary. So you know it's captured as an interesting light textured background as if it's Adobe or something. And the, the finish seems to be Adobe. That said, I'd like to see the eye a little bit easier to see. I'd like to see the head and neck a little bit easier to see. Any other changes, folks? Just a small amount of, uh, on this uh, limb that goes above the bird in the far left, you can see it's a little bit of black and white in there. They probably could have tightened up a little bit on their, uh, uh, you know, uh, it looks like the white bleeds into the background a touch on those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, a little bit better. Uh, Hi, Gary. Yeah. yeah. Next, please. Pictorial double A. Five images. We're getting He's close getting to done, up. but I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> what is up? What is down? <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. You have so many different misleading clues as to what's going on in this world. And it's hard to say if this was intended to be disorienting or if something crazy just happened in the old barn. Fun image, good mm -hmm. texture, good lighting, good sharpness, and crazy angles. Hmm. Next. Almost trackless snow. <laughs> well done. This snow you can see detail on which is so hard with snow you've got a meandering line to 
curve your way around through the image. You've got the odd tracks. Might have wanted to see a little bit more detail in the bushes sticking up in the upper right. But I like this image a lot. What about you folks? White on white. It's always hard to do. They did a good job here. Very hard. I agree with you. Next. The red thread. <laughs> Another playing games with color and it's well done. You have really vivid contrast between the red, the blue, the white, and the silver. The layout lets your eyes move all over the place. You notice that the thread does not actually go off the screen. It stops short at both ends of the cut thread. Mm -hmm. A good, solid, well done picture. Mm -hmm. Nice play on light. Yeah. Next. Here to somewhere better. <laughs> Not sure I agree with that, but it's a lovely picture. Some yeah. interesting foreground objects, the leading lines of the pier, the uh, smoothness of the water from an extended exposure, mm -hmm. the sunset or sunrise off to the right. It's just mm -hmm. a lovely image. What changes might you folks want to see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The pink clouds on the left could be brought out a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. And I might chop a little bit off the bottom to get away mm -hmm. from the four by five and two by three aspect ratios are so common, make it more panoramic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing in the front, the rock looks like a turtle to me and I keep wanting to see it as a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I would certainly keep that in, but I would bring the line up close to it. I think that would have balance too, that little light on the Next. The calm after mm. the storm. Wow. Wow. This has been photographed so many times, yet people find new ways to photograph it. Yeah. Strong image. We all can relate to it. What changes would you like to see? Anyone? Sweet like it is. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see the trees grounded a bit. But the rocks and the snow are great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have done wide angle and get more trees. A little bit Maybe a bit more sky. But the rocks mm -hmm. and the snow, the clouds are really good. Yeah. Okay, next. Pictorial Masters, six images. Oh boy, now we could be mean to the people. They're the masters. <laughs> the last of the night. Iris, a Greek How would you take this wonderful picture and make it worse? <laughs> Put you the saturation. A rainbow for the wide variety of colors found among the species. This is a great image. The critical parts are sharp. Are sharp. The other parts are dreamy, and it goes off, and you have a little bit of green behind you to give a contrast. I really like this image. It just came out wonderful. That said, what changes would you folks make? It would be really cool if it was all if it was just a little bit above the bottom half, half, a little bit bigger than half that bottom part, and get my eye into into that cave in there. Okay. I might ditch that purple in the upper left. Purple you blue. Mean near the green? Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of purple sticking out that's non optimal. That but otherwise, a little, a little intense for me. How about desaturating the green a little bit? Yeah. That might be mm -hmm. good. Reducing the luminance in the green, maybe. There you go. Yeah. yeah. This iris is great. This mm -hmm. wonderful picture. Next. Agave SRPS. And we see this again a little bit different way. How do you like people like this picture? What would you do differently? I definitely want to make something where the contrast was a little more interesting. Dark and enlightened contrast instead of, you know, like the bottom left is really bright, so I vignette it and 
and reduced contrast on the edges and increased contrast towards the middle. Oh. Or drop the okay. exposure a little bit. Mm -hmm. Two yeah. also. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. I that might work. I suggest you also play games with dehaze, clarity, and texture. I, I have a different approach. I would keep the left side, the left half, and it would show it looks like uh, women's breasts with nipples. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yes, I do. That yeah, works for me. <laughs> okay, next. Power provokes. <laughs> wow. I love this. This one. is a strong image. Very strong. Notice how much the eye is popped. Yeah. A lot of work was done in that eye to maybe bring it out, to bring out the colors and contrast and lightness. And this picture would be so different if the eye was just blah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Wonderful great. image. The blood makes it. Blood. On top of his forehead. Oh, yeah. Okay, next. Neighborhood watch. Yep. Sorry, I'm laughing because it's a science fiction book on that by John Ringo and Travis Terry. I think it's Travis Terry. Um, yes. <laughs> My error, sorry. We've got an interesting image. We've got a bunch of contrasts. We have, it looks like little birds that are actually uh, leaves sticking out there. We have the face mm -hmm. from the cut off uh, tree limb. What changes would you folks like to see? I'd love to see that blue with the luminance down just so it wasn't so bright. Yeah. The one red leaf is too close to the edge. Left side. One above the other leaves. That one leaf mid center left, uh, yeah. too close to the edge. I think it's okay, but it is close, I agree. I'd like to see the sky and clouds brought out. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next. I don't know, I kind of like how the, um, the background is, is very soft, including the sky, and it really pulls out that, that front part of it. And that being said, maybe emphasize it a little more. I do like that softness. Yeah, I do too. Next. Under the Milky Way. Ooh, ooh. Cool. Wow. We have the moon rising. We have the tree in the horizon. We have a fun Milky Way. Wow. Did you take this, Greg? No, Ronnie. <laughs> I'll tell you offline why you can tell it's not mine. Okay. Um, I know Ronnie outside of this, and she knows a lot of my pictures. She uh, gets my newsletter, and she's in my daily reading <laughs> on photography. And she knows I do a lot of astronomy photos and a lot of tall ship photos. The Milky Way is pretty well done. The lens is uh, being pushed. You can see a little bit of distortion in the upper right-hand corner where the stars are streaking. They're not streaking in the middle. They are, are streaking a little bit in the left. This indicates that the, you're pushing the capability of the lens. If it was a rule of 500 that's being violated, then the stars in the center, and while most of them are kind of dim, the few that stand up, they would also be streaking, but they're not. You also have the glow from the moon and that's glowing the sky around it, which is legit. That means there's a little bit of haze in the air that's causing it to go. It's unfortunate but impractical to get details on the moon when you're doing the long exposure uh, to get the Milky Way up above. The Milky Way picture is probably between 10 and 30 seconds, probably at around ISO 1600 plus or minus. And that's just going to totally wash out the moon that needs about 1 200th of, of sorry, the moon needs about ISO 200 at about 1 400th of a second, oh. and about F4 for this picture. But I like the image. This is a sort of picture I really love to do. Next. 
I dropped my what? <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I have a friend who actually did change his lens on his house of blood on Angel's Landing and dropped it. Oh. 1,500 foot. The lens bounced, so he jumped off the cliff and caught it and then realized he had a problem. <laughs> he landed on a ledge and he had trouble staying on it and then get back up. Holy Great cow. guy, but a crazy individual hiker. Sounds like this a, is a fun, story. excellent, wonderful picture. Don't get me wrong, I love it. I wish I was back there. And having the person in the foreground adds human interest and gives a better sense of scale and all that good stuff. And with that, we end this. Right. You have a non <laughs> Don't you have a non compete? Yes. We, we got to pick the winners first. We have to have a non compete too. He's oh. already picked them. Oh, never mind. So you get to be presented. Go ahead. One image. Mm. Not flow. Mm. Isn't this a neat twirling, swirling what? item? I love it. Red and black. It's great. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Me, it's almost an abstract feminist nude. <laughs> yeah, it's like two bodies spooning. <laughs> <laughs> it does. And there's sperm coming up. <laughs> oh, goodness. I think we should go to. Um... <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's a very sensual piece. There's a festival coming up in San Francisco soon where it might fit in. <laughs> it's virtual yeah. now. Yeah, it is, unfortunately. Folsom Street, Folsom Street Fair is in yeah. September. Yep. Online. On the other hand, for those of us who are older, we wouldn't have to walk as far. <laughs> <laughs> the red and black works really well with that. Yeah. I agree. Nice. Okay, what do we do now? I've not judged oh, with you guys before. Five to ten minute break and then the winners. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having these wonderful images. They're really yes, thank you. up there. Thanks, Greg. You're welcome. Anyone want to talk while we're waiting? Oh, I wanted to tell you, Greg, about the statues. You, Please do. You, you, um, you chose an unusual night because we normally don't have that many statues. I believe you. I've seldom seen that. <laughs> and I've done a few statue photos. It's tricky. And with the agave plant, was there a field trip? Because I've never seen so many agave plants. Oh, yeah. That too. I don't, I don't think know. So. Um, we have some pictures. We have some of those plants and uh, another similar plant that's red within a block of my house. So in, uh, during isolation period, and just walking around the block. I'm seeing a lot of these. Yeah, yeah I think that's photos. the case. I think so too. Because I've seen them in our neighborhood and we've walked around a lot. There's a lot of them. Yep. Yeah. There's two plants that I've seen that I've also photographed. I've tried I'm gonna have to, to find new roots my I've photographed all the roses and other flowers around me. <laughs> Show you our snacks. Well, the, the rain just 
totaled out all my flowers in the yard. Oh. oh. I know they're pretty when they get a few drops of rain on them. Yeah, but now they flub. <laughs> yeah. Dan, how's your garden? Um, we got the box, we got the soil, we got the soil in the box, and we have to put the plants in next. We haven't got them in yet. Okay. So it's supposed to rain really hard next week on Monday and Tuesday. And I'm yes, so fertilize. I don't know if I should wait till after or try to put them in before. Mm. Depends on how sturdy they are. Yeah, if they're little seedlings, maybe not. But you can fertilize the your the your existing plants if they've already flowered. This is a really good time because the rain will soak it into the ground. Uh huh. I guess this isn't photo talk, but oh well. <laughs> we haven't seen each other in a while. <laughs> it's for future photos. Yeah. My wife does flowers. a lot of gardening, and so I hear a lot of this at home. Okay. <laughs> She's planning to put an iron before the storm hits. I just want to say <clears throat> I enjoyed all your pictures. I'm not talking because I lose my voice at night. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you, Marilyn. You know, it's yeah. really yeah. check this out. <laughs> and the we judge should... did a good job. It was very good. You should enter again. Was it fun to you? You guys Plus went to run for your money. For <laughs> our money. I get my camera out once in a while, but it gets heavier every time I pick it up. No kidding. <laughs> you have a backlog of a lot of fabulous photos. I know. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. I like new stuff. We a lot go. of good lightweight cameras these days. <laughs> yeah. Are you still doing Corel? Hey. No, uh -uh. Hey. no, I haven't done too much in photography, you know, in a, quite a while. Mm -hmm. Greg, yeah. do you use a mirrorless? Do you yes. have uh -uh. No, no. I use Sony um, A7R4 and RX10 Mark IV. About the most I do is with my iPhone anymore. <laughs> hey, Anne's a whiz with that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you saying that you don't shoot uh, hummingbirds you know, anymore? I, I haven't taken too many photos anymore, but I've been working with the ones I've got and trying to get all my pictures organized. And way back when I started in competition, you know, I kind of ignored family pictures. I had drawers full. <laughs> so I'm trying to get all of those organized a little bit. And that's about it with pictures. When did you join the club, Marilyn? Um, gosh, I don't remember now. I forgot. 1979, I believe. Oh, gosh. Wow. Long time ago. Yeah, Long were you one of the original members or the original ones that started the club, Marilyn? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, great, great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'll be 84 in July. So <laughs> they get into show a little bit with the arthritis and you know. <laughs> well, you look like you're doing great. <laughs> you do. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, I, I certainly still look, keep looking at pictures. I still love seeing them and the views. And I remember the picture you had of the foxes on your deck. Yeah. 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 That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nature was always my main, you know, my main thing. I love the nature. <laughs> and painting. Gregory, what's your uh, favorite subject that you like to get out and shoot if you can? Or uh, My very favorite thing is a couple that's in love. Oh, <laughs> oh very good. I also like to do the sky, um, green flashes on the sun, tall ships, and anything else. <laughs> nice. Green <laughs> Greg is also an accomplished um, dance photographer. Ooh. Yes, I've been lucky enough to work with a number of ballerinas. Oh, nice. And oh. Some, some amazing pictures with that. That is. Yeah. You're very fortunate. I am. And if you're going to work with a ballerina, talk to me because 
there's something that uh, can cause confusion and unhappiness and photographers were not aware of uh, one interesting problem with ballerinas. They're perfectionists and they may want to do the same jump or the same twirl again and again and again until they feel it's perfect. And you're and thinking that looks pretty good. You want to take more pictures <laughs> of different things. <laughs> it sounds like a, like on the ice. <laughs> They're, the ones I work with are very much perfectionists. The other thing that's interesting with ballerinas is that, you know, if they leap in the air, the photographer typically wants to take the picture when they're at the peak of the leap. Mm. But the ballerinas generally feel that's not the best point. The best point is when they're starting to fall. Oh. Not when they're spinning, but when they're falling off the spin and they're losing their balance. That's when they feel the peak of the action, that they're the most beautiful. And if you're used to getting the peak of the jump, they're gonna be unhappy with your pictures. <laughs> And it may take a lot of discussion to figure out what's going on. It's a different viewpoint as to what beautiful is. On yeah. the third hand, the ballerinas I've worked with are all incredibly hardworking and are quite open to criticism. Uh, they're used to getting a lot of harsh criticism from the dance masters. Yes. So talk with them, work with them, be nice to them. By the way, these couple, was from a Eagle workshop in January with Jan Lightfoot. Some of you may know her. Uh, she's near you guys actually, and she runs a workshop at Klamath Falls once a year. And this, this is the one of my fun pictures I got. Where was the workshop? They in love? Klamath Falls, um, northeast corner of California. Beautiful. These two were on Eagle Row. <coughs> What kind of lens were you using? Um, <coughs> I was using a Nikon P1000 camera, which is one of the weirdest cameras around and is hard to use. Don't let a beginner use a P1000. Hmm. 24 to 3000 millimeter lens. Gosh. Digital expandable, that's optical, digital expandable to 12,000 millimeter, <clears throat> built-in mode to optimize it for shooting birds, another built-in mode to optimize it for shooting the moon. You really need a tripod, you really need care, and if you try and use that camera for normal subjects, you're gonna go crazy. You can stop it down to F8. Sometimes you can only open it up to F8. <laughs> um, and then it changes the settings on you after some pictures. Tricky. Good results, but crazy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Let's see. And the winners. Journalism B, one image. First place. Joel. <laughs> hey, Joel. Nice. Well, well, thanks. And even though I recognize it's just one image, but uh, yeah, this is an interesting thing over in uh, Sonoma, Sonoma County Fairgrounds in September. And um, I'll mention it to the club when it comes up again. Um, my next door neighbor actually uh, is involved is that him? with it. But um, anyways, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Journalism A, three images. Third place, Craig. All right, Craig. Nice. Is he back? He's there. You want to comment? Looks okay. like the sound is off. He's muted. Okay, there we go. <laughs> right. Uh, sorry. Well, this was kind of a, a classic feature assignment, I thought. Uh, uh, it, it was so easy uh, as a, uh, for a pictorial story. It had a clear beginning, a clear middle, a clear end, 
It had obvious continuity. The second picture was the contestant that won in the fourth picture. So um, I really enjoyed this because I saw all the parts were there to give me a complete photographic story. So I really enjoyed this. Great job. You know, great. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Second place, Betsy. Oh, good. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, this was from personal experience. Um, and um, yeah, so it just kind of shows again the beginning, the middle, and the end of, uh, of the experience there. Um, and the care was very good, which is not something uh, that I would mention in the photojournalism captions, but um, you can see the side view mirror on this last one here. Oh, right. oh. Yeah. I think the doctor thought I was a little bit nuts, you know, <laughs> walking around with my cell phone. But anyway, yeah, this was, this was with my iPhone 8. Nice. I like all the texture in the, the gowns. <laughs> yeah. yeah. First place, Ellen. All right. <clears throat> Ellen, where is she? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Oh. Uh, this was um, from 2017, I believe. So, um, I would love to be able to go back to it this year, but there are a couple of reasons it's not even going to happen. And, but being stuck here at home, I went through my old photos and thought, oh, I could put these together into a sequence. Nicely done. Um, Came out really well. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Journalism AA, three images. Place, Bill. Uh -huh. Well, this is one of those rare occasions where the subject comes to you. This is in our front yard. Oh. And yes. uh, it, they're actually a very perishable. Uh, a bee swarm is just a bunch of bees hanging together with a queen bee inside. And they can't survive cold nights. So it's important if you have something like this to call the beekeepers and they will come running. And they did, nice. and they were nice enough to give me uh, headgear so I could uh, get pretty close and take some of these pictures. Oh, cool. Nice. nice. <laughs> Brave. <laughs> and congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. Come on. <laughs> One thing's not clicking. There we go. Second place, Heath. Wait, keep going. He's not here? I'm here. Okay. You haven't seen the image yet. Oh, there we go. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, the Sonoma County Sheriff's Volunteer Dive Team. Um, kind of, most people don't hear about them or know what they do. and. Um, just captured a uh, call out for a, a diver that was trying to do this service for one of the fishermen that had lost something over his boat and when he went in the water he was searching around trying to find this piece of equipment and he thought he felt it uh, some jeans and what he thought was a possible body and so the dive team was sent to go and investigate and it turned out to be a, a crab pot. <laughs> Thank goodness. Happy ending. Yes. I had never, no idea they'd get down on a ladder. Uh, well, because the dock's so high off the water, you can't just like hoist yourself up with a tank on and everything's too oh. too much gear. Oh, interesting story. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Congratulations. Wow, I'm surprised. Thanks, <laughs> Gary. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's a picture of my wife, Marnie, with her. She loves that sewing machine. It belonged to her mom. I've offered her new ones. <laughs> and she loves that sewing machine. And it is uh, the warm colors because of the light that she's using 
on that. So I chose to chose the ambiance of the warm lighting. And on then on the second one, that was a uh, just a nice, I wanted to kind of show some of the things that she's doing there, cutting it out, the board in the back, M gauge, you know, and the material. And then the very last one, now the yellow is actually a yellow material and uh, that I set it on. And then you can see the color balance is all right, but there's not much white in there. If you look at the white, the actual white, you'll see that they are white, you know, and this like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, just uh, she, she's probably made a, three batches of almost 40 and she's busy uh, this afternoon finishing up the last batch of 40. So, sure. wow. Yeah, wow, well, that's thank great. You. Nice. Miller, thank you. Yes. Yeah. You bet. You bet. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> great nice person. choices of palette. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she has them. Journalists and Masters, three images. Third place, Anne. Oh, this was a, a parade in uh, Washington, D.C. We just happened on while we were there. And um, it was really inspiring to see the young people so involved and so emotional about this issue. And uh, I really was moved by it and, and made me want to read um, uh, the gal that was leading this march. I forget her. What's her name? Greta. 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 Yeah, thank oh. you. Uh, her book, which I do have and I have been reading, and she's really an inspiring young woman. And, and I'm just wondering what's going to happen um, with this pandemic. It's, it's uh, yeah. to me, it's a sign of the crisis that we're in, a symptom of it uh, for the climate that we're having pandemics as well as fires and everything else. Um, so it made me ask this question. So that's kind of why I entered it. So yeah. thank well, you. Right. Yeah. Well done. Nice, Dan. Right. Yeah. Well awesome. done. Second place, Tamara. Uh, sorry, I had to find my unmute here. Uh, I just threw this in just for kind of a joke and the picture when I was not a joke, but a personal experience and uh, because the, the final image still makes me cringe when I look at it. <laughs> and I, I have some when they were actually had the thing all the way up into my skull, but it was just crazy and I was dropping the, the, the phone and everything because it was so uncomfortable. <laughs> was that in, in Africa or here? No, it was right after we got back. I got sick a couple days after we got back. Oh, you um, got it? Well, they, they, I, I, they was tested, came back negative, but of course they're saying they don't really know because know. the tests are so bad. But, yeah. Um, who knows? But it was a very uncomfortable test. Yeah. <laughs> and then I tried to photograph when my husband had to go in later because he got sick too. And uh, mm. I, I, I couldn't even take a picture of someone else having to do it because it was so <laughs> uncomfortable. I just, ah, I can't even take the picture. <laughs> so I hope no one else has to do it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Very nice. First place, Terry. Well, thank you. Um, Fort Ross is a wonderful place, and the rooms uh, can give some really lovely light. So that's what I was going for, and just increasing my black and white skills. Nice. Okay, uh, I love this one. It's so sweet. Actually, she wasn't supposed to be back there. And the older lady kind of got upset with her because as they had it designed, they would bring you the flowers you wanted. You didn't just go back and grab them. So <laughs> Rebel, <laughs> you need to know that part. <laughs> the lighting Beautiful. is just great. great yeah, lighting. the lighting was yummy. Mm. Congratulations. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Carrie. Nice. Travel B. Two images. Second place, Fritz. Is he here tonight? I don't think he's here. I don't think so. Congratulations, Fritz. First place, Elizabeth. Oh, yes. Sweet. Um, amazing to, this is the last gong factory in, um, 
West Java and the artisans sit on the floor and pour the bronze and then they pound it out and use their feet to hold the forms. It was just magical. And then, of course, the sound is brilliant. So mm. it kind of captured it all. I was, I was pleased with myself that I could get it in this light. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you. Nice. Yeah. Nice, Elizabeth. Nicely nice done, Elizabeth. Beautiful. Good one. Bravo three images. Third place, Linda. Oh, that was beautiful. Uh, that was, uh, we were moving from Montana to California three years ago, and we drove by here, and this was in May, and there was still all kinds of snow there, and, and never seen that, and we probably spent an hour and a half just walking the rim. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful, beautiful, mm -hmm. amazing place, you know. Yeah. It's cold. Thank you. Nice. I love the water reflection. Yeah, yeah. it was just lovely. Glad you came here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad we did too. To travel there. Yeah. Field trip. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Next year. Second place. Betsy. Hmm. Oh, thank you. Um, this place was so magical to me. Um, and to get the entire amphitheater here, um, this is at 9,000 feet to begin with. And then you walk up a very steep trail to a place called Inspiration Point. I'm sure I'm not the only one here who's been there. Um, got there just before the sun came up and the light was everything on the hoodoos here. Mm, beautiful. Amazing. It's gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous lighting. Thank you. Nice. Congratulations. In first place. Sherry. Oh. Cool. Nice. I don't think Sherry's here. No. no. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's great image. I love great it. Great job, Beautiful. Sherry. Beautiful. Yep. I like it. Congratulations. Travel double A. Three images. Third place, Bill. Hmm. I don't think he's here. Yeah. No. Nice. Is he not here? No. He's not there. Congratulations, Bill. Yeah. Second place. Boy. Herb. Oh. Mm, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Unmute myself? Okay. Yeah, this was uh, on a truck to Eastern Oregon, just driving around. And uh, this is on everyone's list of places to go see. Yes. So uh, there's there's a lot more there, and uh, I'm sure I'll be entering some other images as well. But it's uh, it's it's uh, it's pretty unique. Lots of fun, and, and definitely worth seeing if you're in the neighborhood. On my list now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> nice light and the cloud darkness on the top of that one rock yeah. through the hills. Really yeah. neat. Yeah. I've been there before. Yeah. You did a nice job of this. Yeah. Uh, we, yep. we were lucky in the sense that uh, it was cloudy, and I'm I'm just sitting there waiting for the for the sun to come through the clouds. So as the sun was going down, we actually got a, a almost pitch black sky with the amphitheater lit up. Whoa. Uh, wow. Yeah. So wow. That's that's a coming attraction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Graduation. Uh, Thank you. First place, Bill. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, thank you. Great, Bill. Hard shot to take because the target was so far away yeah. to get, everybody, get everything in the picture. But the amazing thing for me was the, the you have to shoot the arrow high in the air and then intersect the target about an inch of off the ground. I mean, it's such a precise wow to make. It's just, wow. just amazing to watch. I love your juxtaposition with the guys. Yeah, they're all separated. Yeah, yeah. beautifully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. I found it so amazing, the confidence in the shooter that the people are standing so close. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of them had their eyes shaded so they could see it coming. <laughs> oh, 
looking into the but, uh, sun. <clears throat> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Travel Masters, three images. Third place, Nick. All right. Not here. Sorry, Nick. Not here. I like how the yellow bounces around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Excellent good. aspect ratio. Very good. Second place, Nancy. Oh, wow, I love this. Thank you. Uh, did a, a, what do you call a, a, a photo walk in, uh, in, in Bangkok. And it was a Muslim area. And when I shot this, afterwards, I kept trying, I love researching, and afterwards, whether it's nature or whatever, and I, I asked so many Thai people, who is this? And some thought it was maybe a Muslim uh, uh, master. And, and then the, said, but the, 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 the Buddha-like person behind the amulet has a very, kind of monstery monster look and they thought it might have been black magic um they said that's not and it wasn't really muslim so um i i wow through a lot of reading i found and, and i found myself attracted to a lot of these uh and uh things like just like we have in uh, say in with christianity and and easter has uh, fertility with the Easter bunny and, and that, or, or things at Christmas are uh, uh, the, uh, <coughs> you know, the, 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 the different festivals uh, or, or the witchcraft things that are taken over uh, to celebrate at, uh, say, for, for, uh, for, for Halloween, for All Hallows Day. Mm -hmm. And so this is the same sort of thing as if the local people had these there local religions that they when they became a buddhist state they merged them together which is uniquely uh thai thai buddhist is to have these uh uh, uh 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 kind of black magic that the some of the uh uh, uh watts uh encourage it and the head of uh wants wants to take away this from uh, the people being able to do this so it's very fascinating and all because i took a picture of some guy's skin it was very cool thank you <laughs> makes me want to know more oh, what, nice what, story what, was it raining <laughs> oh he it, <laughs> it's so hot there i mean oh, that's why he's all wet oh uh, yeah he's, he's all wet Congratulations. Nice. First place, Amara. Nice. Oh, yeah. Um, thank you. Um, this was in a crazy, very remote town with no tourists on a market day. And uh, I think when I do my master's class, it's going to be about this, this morning, this town where nobody liked us and we stood out and I was really struggling with trying to get anybody to let me take their pictures, and by the end, uh, everybody was pretty friendly, and I, I got a couple of pictures I really liked, and this was one of them. They look like sisters, but when I tried to ask them, uh, they don't speak Swahili even, or much less English, and uh, I never quite got it. They, they were kind of saying, no, they weren't sisters, but they sure look like sisters to me. <laughs> yeah. I love the pointed finger. Like, yeah. yeah. To enter into the scene, and... That's and they great. really do, like when you look at their earrings and at all of the dress, all of that has a lot of symbolism that kind of like Nancy digging into what she was digging into and with her Bangkok picture. Yeah. I've been spent a lot of time up in the Sambru area and starting to understand a little bit about which earrings mean what and which different things they wear mean all sorts of different things. So it's quite mm -hmm. interesting. Did a nice great. job of showing the made Beautiful. dress. Really nice. nice. Congratulations. Beautiful. Monochrome V, three images. Third place, Ronnie. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Uh, this actually was more than one anemone. It was a very windy day, 
focus was not easy. Um, I love the backlighting. In fact, I'm pretty sure I use the backlight function on my Canon 77D, which is why I don't want to give it up. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I I love the bokeh and the that I was able to get. And yes, I should have been the Edge Patrol. Um, yeah. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Second place, Elizabeth. Oh, um, this was fun. This was um, in upcountry in Maui on a private botanic garden. And this uh, cactus was probably 10 feet tall. And so it just, I walked in the middle of it. It was fascinating, but mm. thank you. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Cool. Congratulations. Congratulations. First place. Hat. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. I don't think she's here. Not here. Congratulations. Yeah, well deserved. Great. Is there? I can't hear. She's nope. not here. No. Okay. Monochrome A. Five images. Yeah. Honorable mention. Very. Very nice. Not here. Not here. Honorable mention. Craig. Oh, thanks. This was, <laughs> um, at, I took this at the Rebel Junk and Antiques, I think it was, at the, uh, at the uh, fair here in Santa Rosa. Uh, it's kind of like a little antique shop. And, you know, I kept looking at this statue as, a, as human, and I think of, of it as her when it's really an it. I mean, it's really as stone cold as stone can be, but it just kept tugging at my heartstrings, so uh, it will never criticize me. <laughs> will never criticize me. So anyway, uh, it, it was neat. I had a little fun with it. I'm glad that you liked it. I thought it looked familiar. <laughs> Congratulations. Third Thank place, you. Greg. Not here. Not here. Congratulations, Greg. Good one. Second place. Linda. Mm. Wow. Mm. Another nice image, Linda. This uh, was taken last year during the, uh, um, oh, it was in Sonoma, Sonoma Square, and it was the uh, Mexican Independence Day. They had all kinds of the dancing, was absolutely fantastic. But there's so, there's so much behind this guy that I had to black blacking out so much because it was uh, so distracting and so much light behind him. So I worked with him a lot, but I can see we're making it a little softer on the tips would be really a, a neat idea mm -hmm. on that. But I, I really liked him. I like him in color too. It's really neat. Thank you. Yep, I remember yeah, the color. Great. I remember the color. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye. Mm. Oh. Thank you. This is uh, actually an infrared shot at Zabriskie Point in Death Valley. Uh, oh. it's, like, it's such a crisp background in the dark sky. I didn't do anything. There's no filters involved. It's all done because of the infrared light wavelengths. And uh, it's, about a, it's about 120 degrees that day and maybe a 100 yard hike up to the point here. And uh, it was a lot of work in that heat. So anyway, I think it got, I got a nice shot out of it. So thank you. Good job. Congratulations. Good job. Very nice. Congratulations. Monochrome double A, five images. Honorable mention, Mike. Wow. Oh, cool. Beautiful. Great image. Uh, thanks. I had a tough time with this one. I went back and forth six or eight times changing things. And uh, the white at the bottom is a baseboard. And I, 
it was a lot brighter, so I toned it down, but I do see the part on the right that sticks out by her elbow. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a real gritty morning. I, I thought I gave her a pretty gritty look. So. Mm -hmm. Pretty too, great. great. Yeah. <laughs> but number great, 10 great. Great. I didn't know it was a woman. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah, thank you. What's up? Congratulations. Honorable yeah. mention. Prisha. Ah, thank you. This is part of my um, BFA project for school, um, inspired by the work of John Coplands. Mm. So thank you. Nice image. Well done. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Good, Good job. Very nice. Amazing. Congratulations. Third place, Trisha. <laughs> I think I took this image more than 10 years ago. I just found it. I've been going through images, probably like everybody else. And the Tuesday afternoon group did a years ago, and I think that's where this one came from. Anyway, thanks. Really cool. Love it. Yeah, nice. nice. Second place. Mike. Uh, it's yours. This was, uh, I was at, at Pete's at the uh, ferry terminal. Uh, uh, Trisha, I don't know if you were there that day with Liz. Yeah. I was sitting on the other side of a window, so I shot this picture while I was waiting for my coffee. Uh, he was on the other side in the uh, dining area. And I, I just love the beards. <laughs> I went. Really great. Thank really you. nice lighting. Great turning it in black and white too. Yep. Yeah, it's I easy really top like beard. Black and white. It's fun. Thanks a lot. Nice. Well done. Nice. Congratulations. First place. Go on the train again. Gary. Oh. Oh, oh thank wow. you. <laughs> this is another shot that I did. I had one other one that I had shown uh, several months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, this was in the fall, Ely, Nevada, great train museum. If you're on the loneliest highway in America, by the time you get to Ely, stop, stop overnight and come early in the morning, especially it was cold, colder because it was fall. And uh, you can wander around the yard and uh, that's part of the experience. You buy a little tag and you buy a ticket. And then if you want, you can get a more expensive ticket and actually ride the train. Yeah. In this case, they were bringing it out and getting it turned around, but it just, the cold morning really made the steam show up on this. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Great picture, Gary. <laughs> Congratulations. Micro Masters, five images. Mm. Honorable mention. Tomorrow. Oh, the kids. That's a neat image. Sorry, I'm, I'm muting. Um, thanks. This, this one is one I've been playing around with a lot because I just really love the, well, I guess it wasn't as obvious as I thought. The handbag, the, her dress, oh, the hand-me-down sure. handbags title is it's all dress. little handbags all over her dress. Um, and it was, uh, I've been to a lot of these villages, but this one was a particularly, oof, I don't know why, because it was kind of the most touristy area that I'd been to, but really uh, pretty rugged <laughs> little village with a lot of not I don't know it was not a good yeah. and, and then to just see these two and then this one just gave me that look that little girl and the mom's got all her beads on it and everything she's picking up firewood mm -hmm. I don't know anyway I just really like this image so thank you thank you nice yeah. nice congratulations honorable mention me ah. oh. Steve <laughs> I was gonna guess Tim <laughs> Where did you do that? That's great. Good one, Steve. <laughs> if you take this and you flip it vertically, uh, this is actually the um, Hilton Hotel Financial District, San Francisco. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nice yeah. graphic. If you, at, if you look at the bottom, that's actually going up. As you go down, it's actually going up, and those are the windows going up. And what you see is this imprint of the wood framing when they poured the concrete. And I boosted the contrast enough to really bring out the texture, because when you see it uh, in real life, you can't really see any of that texture. 
Very cool. Very cool. Very nice. Nice. Very cool. And uh, the row at the top, I took to be like a widow's walk at the top of a building. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Oh, very sweet. Third place. Wow. Tony. Oh, sweet. This was uh, shot near Calf Falls, uh, which is uh, in southern Utah. I probably worked on this image for about two hours because I started to develop a relationship with the three figures. Mm -hmm. And it, it almost got a little bit spiritual because mm -hmm. you can stop and think of what happened to all of these people. And I was uh, cropping it one way, I was cropping it another, I was making the figures lighter, darker. And I gave up in desperation and took the one that was the closest to what I thought worked. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very you, cool. You really Love the feel. feel. Oh, this is a great a hike, picture, Tony. Thank was you. that a big hike going out to it? Uh, it, it was worse. Uh, I was with four other guys, and we were post holing through um, about two and a half feet of snow. Oh, oh my goodness. No. Now that's that area of the south of Green uh, River? It's, uh, no, this is uh, uh, just about east of Escalante. Oh, okay, oh. great. Oh, very nice. Very magical. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, Love nice. It. Congratulations. Country. Yeah. Second place, Nick. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. That's a, oh, yeah. Very nice. It looks like the shadows are moving. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Optical like illusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, neat feel. Yeah. Very nice. nice perspective. Mm -hmm. And first place, Steve. Ooh. Ooh. Is he here? Is he here tonight? I don't think so. I don't think I don't think so. so. I was here. No. He didn't know oh, you're thinking of Steve Gibbs. That's right. Yeah. yeah. He seems nice. in the middle. So That's he's not here anymore? I can't. No. Great tonality. Yeah. Congratulations, Steve. Pictorial B. Three images. Third place. Ronnie. Oh, good for you, Ronnie. Um, thank you. I actually have, I wrote down some information about this building, which really captivated me. And um, I posted it in a um, the San Francisco photography group and people there gave me some information. So I looked it up. It's 303 Sutter. It's called the Hammersmith Building. It was built in 1907. It is a landmark building, and the first jukebox in the United States was installed in that building. Mm -hmm. huh. Fascinating. Um, and I think 1919, I can't remember the exact year, sorry. Um, the other interesting thing is that there is a lot of glass in this building, and the arches are a really interesting um, architectural element. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just love this building. So thank you. Wonderful building. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Second, please. Joel. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun, Joel. Good job, Joel. <laughs> like a Joel picture. <laughs> so the... Uh... Person on the right is my brother-in-law. Oh, I'm sorry. The person on the left. <laughs> but yeah, the person on the left is my brother-in-law. And this is uh, Cowboy Museum in Scottsdale, Arizona. And it's a very interesting museum if you ever get out there. But uh, my brother-in-law was standing, um, looking out. He's a musician. He's got great facial expressions, as you can see. So it just came together. Thank you. Yeah, great humor. <laughs> Congratulations. First place. Pat. Oh, he's not here. Not here. Lord. I love that soft sand. 
Yeah. 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 Great picture. Mm -hmm. The little wisp going to the left, cutting mm -hmm. right in. Green That's eye. the iconic. Yeah. Yeah. Victoria Lay. Six images. Honorable mention. Betsy. Mm. Oh, thank you. This is from a walk around the neighborhood uh, after quarantine started. Um, and there are some fabulous succulents in this one person's front yard. Um, and this is an agave, and I came in really, really close. The plant is really big, kind of like Elizabeth, what you were talking about. <laughs> um, it's really big, and um, but I just kind of like the forms here. Mm. Love that green color. I know the color is weird. Yeah. Wow, really unusual color. Beautiful. Yeah. It's wrapped okay. off the top and just look at the bottom. It almost looks like a caterpillar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, huh? yes. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I like about this really quickly is that you can see the imprints or yeah. the indentation yeah. Of, uh, yeah, exactly. as it's grown and separated. Yes. Yeah, it'd be Thank fun you. to just take the top, the bottom half. Mm -hmm. That looks really cool. Dark in the middle, light on the outside, and that caterpillar look. Yeah, very cool. Really cool. Mm. Congratulations. Yeah. Honorable mention, Steve. <laughs> well, I must admit, uh, if you look by that lower building up there, that's Tony Rayans standing along the <laughs> line, taking a picture of that building. Oh, yeah. And I were up the coast there. And I've edited this image several times. Unfortunately, uh, with all three of my images, they were all re edited after I just spent about 500 bucks on editing, or uh, excuse me, calibrating, new calibrating equipment, recalibrated several times and thought, boy, it just seems like the contrast is too high. I can't believe it was that far off. Re edited everything and the contrast disappeared i took away some vignetting and stuff and everything i'm looking at now going wow i did i just left it alone it <laughs> not the sky though I, I like the sky is better but it was darker more vignetted a little more contrast a little more detail so it looked better before so i'm gonna i don't know what is wrong with my calibration but <laughs> all three of my images were a disaster so you but can like re-enter it again yep mm -hmm. yeah yeah is that in sebastopol I think yep, it's that's right on the coast. You can see the ocean next to that left building there. Ah. That's um, right near Reef Campground, below Fort Ross. Oh, wow. Okay. It's hard yeah, to ab, distinguish. Ab diving spot of mine, right down there. Huh. <clears throat> Very pretty. Yeah. Honorable men. Oh. oh, wow. I love it. Great. Yeah, it's so, so cool. um, this was from a walk in my backyard. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. Somebody, I showed this uh, uh, at the Tuesday group and somebody said I should bring out the red and the ladybug, which I did and I cropped it more and uh, there you have it. It's so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> Very nice. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Really, it's beautiful. Third place, Linda. Mm. This was Doran Beach. Doran Beach, yep. Doran Beach, the, the day before everything was shut down and the sky was fantastic. And I have pictures where it's basically all sky and just the teensy bit of the lines, but every picture said something different and I really liked the lines here. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a watercolor. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. use any Lamenzia on it? You know, uh, I have it and I haven't learned how to use it yet. I'm still trying to <laughs> learn Photoshop. <laughs> and like we all and like <laughs> and topaz yeah but that was it was nobody was on the beach nobody 
And then when, when everything got shut down and everybody was on the beach the following weekend, and then they closed all the beaches right after that. Yeah. And we I'm drove glad you got there. this one. Yeah, it's beautiful. Congrats. Oh, nice. You. Congratulations. Second Thank place. You. Steve. Mm. Thank you. This is probably uh, another one that was darker that I lightened up quite a bit. And uh, I missed at upper left hand corner, too light in that upper left hand corner. But I'll tell you what, it looks a hell of a lot better on my computer screen. <laughs> but at least I got got something out of it and that people liked it. I like it. Really magical. Yeah, yeah, I like it. See, it some, wasn't a disaster. Yeah, well, that one turned out, that was the best of the three in terms of closest to what it looked like on my screen. But it looked off. It looks a lot better on my screen. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. Congratulations, Steve. Thanks. First place. Guy. Mm. Mm, yeah. This was taken in Antelope Canyon, Arizona. If you've ever been there, it's a tricky place to photograph because the canyon's three, maybe three to five feet wide, and you're trying to set up a tripod. And while you're doing that, there's a hundred people wandering by you trying to take pictures. And uh, it's tricky. Uh, they used to have uh, a photographer's tour that I signed up. I took this a few years ago. And you could go there with a, with a, a group of photographers and the guides, the Navajo Indian guides, would try to hold people up so they wouldn't walk through your pictures. <laughs> Great image. One of my Is that Antelope Canyon? Area. Congratulations. There, ghost. Congratulations. Love it. Pictorial A. Three images. Third place. Keith. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> thanks. That's out at uh, Bodega Bay and. Uh, just been out there a lot of times and <clears throat> been waiting for a decent sunset and mm -hmm. that's about as good as I can get that night. <laughs> so where are you? Yeah. yeah. That pier. Uh, my feet are probably up? in about two inches of water. This is right by uh, Gourmet Obey, the oh. restaurant there. Oh. Oh, and it's yeah. uh, this is actually, um, there's a section of the pier that doesn't connect to the land. So you're actually looking out into the bay from shore. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Thanks. Congratulations. Second place. Herb. Mm, that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Are we uh are we good? We're good. Am I unmuted? You are unmuted. You are unmuted. Oh very good. Okay. Uh yeah, we were in Yosemite for uh Thanksgiving and it snowed and so as soon as it actually during the snow we were out and then uh, even after the the sun finally came out so um i've got a, a million pictures of half foam but this is the first one where uh, i got the snow on it and the, the sun comes out on top of it so it was uh, fortunate to be there at that time mm -hmm. beautiful beautiful job really nice yeah. very good congratulations First place. Thank you. Jennifer. Mm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love this. oh, well, thank you. I, I, um, this is in Yellowstone National Park, and I, uh, I just love the, the texture and the shapes of the snow, but I really wondered what animal it was that, that went walking across there. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I, it's one of my favorite pictures from my, my time in Yellowstone. And uh, <laughs> this was supposed to be my big travel year. And this is actually the only trip I ended up taking and probably the only trip I will end up taking for the whole year. Uh, so I'm so happy I went there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Oh, nice. Very nice. Victorial Masters, three images. Third place. Honey. Well, the only problem I really had with this image was not putting in the profanity I want in the title. <laughs> <laughs> this, things like this have happened to me and my language was not that good. <laughs> this was shot uh, at, I got a cat in my head. 
Uh, <laughs> Photo bomb. Uh, this this was shot uh, at uh, outside of Moab at uh, Dead Horse Point. <laughs> you got a scene stealer there, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> very, very great. Beautiful <laughs> picture. <laughs> Unplanned. Second place, Nancy. I thought that was Nancy. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'd like to cut off heads. That's one of my features. Uh, uh, um, a ghost. You're a ghost. Yeah. That is so oh. powerful. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. Balsam Street Fair. Um, they're getting so they don't want people taking pictures unless you ask, get permission, yeah. which changes the whole energy. And I don't know if we'll go back because it's really changed a lot. Um, this woman's uh, name is Say Sainine, S A Y N I N E, Sainine. And the reason she has that name is that's nine is her uh her word you know she would say nine if she wants them to stop and they both are married to someone else and whatever the relationships they have this is uh th this this is their relationship that uh at this event and and they were really excited that gary and i both took pictures and they wanted pictures from us and so they were very excited to get some shots. Wow. That's fabulous. Very nice. Nice. Nice eye. Oh, the eyes. Yeah. yeah, the eye. The eyes have it. <laughs> wow. First place. Anne. Hey. Uh, congratulations, Anne. It's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> I learned something about the iris. It's a Greek god and the uh, they come in so many different colors, and I was really surprised to see this one. I'd never seen one this color before, so. It's gorgeous. I yeah. Took a picture wow. of it. I agree, the green is overwhelming. I should knock that back a little bit, but anyway, okay. thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> Congratulations. And you took it with your iPhone. I did. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh. Congratulations. My iPhone picture. You can't, you can't yeah. face them. That's so Marilyn, get out your iPhone. <laughs> yes, I, I keep that. Oh, I and got it. Her, her, master's, her master's presentation is going to be on the iPhone, so watch the space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. August. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> da -dum, da -dum. Oh, nice. Nice. Now, one thing about congratulations, this, they've apparently discontinued the uh, the tours, the photo tours now. So this would be the last chance that you really have to get in there with a tripod. It's unfortunate. So ever and ever. Yeah, as far as I know, it's it's uh, operated by the Navajo Nation, and they yeah. they want to be able to get more people through, and the photographers hold up. And they, Hold up the line so they can't get as many people through. They charge quite a bit of money to, to go but through. They charge you extra for for the photographer group, don't they? Yes, they do. Uh, yeah, there's about eighty dollars or something like that for an hour. Mm -hmm. Well, we were we were in the canyon for probably less than a half an hour. All right. Oh, wow. it was worth it. I got a lot of great shots. I got about a hundred shots of this tumbleweed and all different formats and sideways and vertical, and horizontal, <laughs> everything. But I think this worked the best. Thank you. Very nice. You're really yeah. beautiful. Can I say something before you finish? Um, so, um, un unluckily, um, the last the last two images, best in show, were verticals, and you guys, I think, do it on purpose because I put the um, best in show as the cover photo on our Facebook group, oh. <laughs> and I have to crop it. So where would you like me to crop it, guy? You can turn it horizontal if you like. There you uh -huh. go. Okay. Make the landscape. Okay. Yeah, maybe okay. Just you just you got it. Not straight up, so it can go uh -huh. any, any way you want. That's uh, yeah, landscape. There That's kind of funny because uh, Howard, Howard Bernsteiner used to tell me he said he said you you never wanted 
enter a vertical picture, which I usually do. And, and he said, because they can't win because they don't take up as much real estate. Yeah. You, you should do it yeah. at the horizontal. And uh, these last three times have certainly disproved that. So yeah, you, can, you can post it uh, as a horizontal, that's fine. All right, you got it. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, everybody. Marilyn, good come night. Night. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Thank you Steve. Greg. Beautiful pictures. And Bill, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Bill. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Yep. Miss you all. Bye, everybody. Good to see you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye, 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 B